So error handling in Go, everyone talks about as being one of the biggest downfalls of the entire programming language. Everyone says, you know, I wish Go had a better way of handling errors. It's so annoying. I have to type all this, that. You know, I've heard it all from all the videos I've made using Golang and talking about it live on stream. And then, you know, I just happened to stumble upon this article. It's called Going Insane. I really like the very creative. Endless error handling. I've been using Go for a few years now, mostly in my open source project, Lazy Git, which is a really cool project. In my day job, I use Ruby and TypeScript, I've also spent some time with Rust. Oh, ooh. Ew. Each of these languages have a design quirks that can grind a developer's gears. Absolutely. I mean, Ruby, TypeScript, and Rust. Now, although my own personal gears have been ground by every language I've used, Go is the only language that has made me feel indignant. You have not touched Malbolge, my friend. The series attempt to spell out exactly why. My goal is not to convince you that Go is an objectively bad language. It's to convince you that for certain people, working in Go feels like a constant struggle against stupid constraints. So I'm going to Assume that he means that the way Go chooses to handle errors is a stupid constraint. How does Go handle errors? Ignoring unrecoverable errors for which the program will crash in print a stack trace, errors in Go are just regular values. Remember that. People still argue about whether error values are better than exceptions, but even if programming God aimed down and decreed that error values were indeed superior, he would still take the time to scorn Go's particular implementation of error values before ascending back into the heavens. <laughs> Jesus. For every function that might, might return error, there will be three lines of boilerplate. If error does not equal to nil, return error. I mean, these are just the creme de la creme. This is how you identify Golang. This bloats functions and obscures their logic. If you have a function that simply calls three other functions, the result is huge. Funk my funk, error foo. If error does not equal to nil, error bar, same thing, error baz. If error does not equal to nil, return bar. If you guys like Go in this kind of content, make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy but let's get back to the video this portion encapsulates the argument here that i think a lot of people have not just the author is the repetition of if error does not equal to nil and then you have to return it and you can see here funk my funk returns an error so we can even make the assumption that wherever we're calling my funk from whether it's a nil value so happy path nothing happened or an error from one of these three function calls it's going to return something so we're going to have error equals my funk and then whoever knows how nested this function is. But the thing that blows my mind on how programmers really complain about this is like errors are just value. That's how they are designed to use. And even if we just ignore the fact for a second that these three lines are repeated three times, right? In a very basic function, you cannot argue one thing is that foo, bar, and baz, whatever they do, we don't know what they do behind the scenes, right? These could be called APIs. These could be just printing something. We don't know. We don't care. But we can definitely agree that at the very least, they are returning some value. They're returning error because we're calling these functions and we are assigning it to this variable ERR. And this doesn't matter. You can call this whatever you want. It's a variable, right? We're inferring the type with the Go operator here and we're just handling it like so. But you could call this whatever you want. And this logic here could be written any way you want. It just so happens that you're checking for what this value may or may not be. And then you're just returning it up the function call. Now, why am I saying this? Because this paradigm, this, this thinking is just handling value. It's just a way to handle values. Foo bar bas return errors and then these are values and these are handled whatever way we want. You could just ignore these. You could just not assign anything from the return call of foo. You could just do an underscore of the return call of foo. You could just not do this part. You could panic. You could handle it gracefully. You literally have control of how you want to handle these values. And I think that to me is the biggest selling point of the way Go chooses to go about its error handling. I even found a blog post from 2015 from the man himself, Rob Pike, called Errors Are Value. A common point of discussion among Go programmers, especially those new to the language, is how to handle errors. The conversation often turns into a lament at the number of times the sequence, if error does not equal to nil, return error, shows up. We recently scanned all the open source projects that we could find and discovered this snippet occurs only once per page or two, less often than some would have you believe. Still, if the perception persists that one must type, if error does not equal to nil, all the time, something must be wrong and the obvious target is Go itself. I'm going to read just a little bit more. This is unfortunate misleading and easily corrected. Perhaps what is happening is that programmers new to Go ask, how does one handle errors? Learn this pattern and stop here. In other languages, one might use a try catch block or other such mechanism to handle errors. Therefore, the programmer thinks when I would have used a try catch in my old language, I will just type if error does not equal to nil in Go. Over time, the Go code collects many such snippets and the result feel clumsy. Regardless of whether this explanation fit, it is clear that these Go programmers miss a fundamental 
fundamental point about errors. Errors are values. I'm going to stop here because this is just how this author, this programmer is choosing to handle the error. Like Rob Pike is saying, it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to have this three lines. I mean, yes, I agree. I'm not going to be blind to the fact that this pattern happens the most in Go error handling, but it's not the only option you have. You can wrap them. You can return custom error messages. You can, you know, like I said, you can ignore them. You can panic. And I actually find that as the highlight and attractive point of Golang because when I first started Go, I came from TypeScript and Python where error handling is much different. And I never really thought of errors. To me, when I thought of an error before Go, it's like, oh, error, super bad. This must crash my app. Therefore, I must ignore them at all costs. But in Go, my thinking of errors has really shifted. I don't think errors are these nasty, scary things. I need to just throw everything and panic and crash my application and restart it, right? Because something diabolical happened. But instead, I just think of them as like, okay, this is a behavior that my program is seeing right now. Now, as the creator, as the author, as the programmer, what do I want as the outcome? Do I want to panic? Sure. If there's a malicious, you know, hacker or something very bad going on, that could be a leak, could be something significant. You probably want to panic and make sure your application stops. Or, but if it's something pretty all right, you know, maybe your API call didn't go through because your token expired or something like that. That's not enough of a reason to crash your application in some instances. Instead, you want to handle them gracefully. Maybe you just want to log your errors or maybe you just want to pass them up to, you know, be processed upstream in the function trace or whatever it may be. You have options because these are just values, right? I'm just repeating what Rob Pike and what this author is saying. They're just values and it's your choice how you want to handle them. I find that super powerful. I don't really look at it as like the hassle to just type in like what, maybe 25 characters total as this giant like waste of time. Like I'm not that efficient. I don't think that highly of myself. Instead, I give my, myself an opportunity to think, well, how do, what do I want to do with this value, with this error, right? How do I want to handle it? How does my program look in both paths where the error value is nil or when the error value is not nil? And I truly think that has made me think better and think more clearly about writing software in general. And I'm actually grateful for that. And this is one of the reasons why I like Go. I like error handling. I like the way it is. I like if error doesn't equal to nil. I think it's hilarious. I love the memes and I absolutely adore this pattern. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you like this pattern? Do you think it's annoying? And if you don't like it, why? What is something that truly bothers you about it? Is it just because of how often you have to write it? Or is it something deeper that maybe I missed in this conversation that the author captured and I just didn't give it the proper attention? But let me know in the comment section below. As always, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Oh.